Hi, I'm Aaron Zeller with SCC. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to properly set up a Siemens modulating water level control system. A Siemens water level control system typically includes five components. A 7MF differential pressure transducer and a three valve manifold. These, these two items work together to sense the water level in the vessel and demand more or less water through the 599 water valve here, which is actuated by an SKB, C, or D modulating actuator. Comparing the actual value to the set point and commanding the SK actuator is an RWF 50.3 or 55.5 PID controller. The 7MF DP transducer must be mounted vertically below the minimum water level of the vessel. Since the reference leg and the working leg exert equal and opposite forces below the water level, it can be mounted any distance below this level. The reference leg should be filled with water at startup. At the top of this leg, there should be two pipe tees or a condensate pot arranged as such. This keeps this leg full of water at all times up to this point. When controlling water level in a boiler or deaerator, the reference leg is connected here to the negative or minus port on the 7MF. The working leg is connected here to the positive port. When controlling water level in an open or vented vessel, only the working leg needs to be connected. The SK actuator and 599 water valve should be mounted vertically in the water supply line to the vessel. Note that the Siemens 599 water valves are rated for a maximum differential pressure of 50 PSI during modulation. The RWF controller can be mounted anywhere near the system. The RWF 50 is 1 16th din and the RWF 55 is 1 8th din, allowing easy mounting in a control panel and closure door. Wiring is even easier than mounting. Simply apply 120 volts AC to the RWF on terminals L1 and N. Install a jumper between 13 and G minus on the RWF 50 or 14 and G on the RWF 55 as shown here. Terminals A plus and A minus send the 4 to 20 milliamp signal to the SK actuator. The SK actuator receives the 4 to 20 milliamp signal on terminals Y and M and is powered by 24 volts AC in terminals GO and G. The 7MF DP transducer is loop powered, meaning it works off the low voltage DC coming from the RWF. Connect terminal 12 on the RWF shown here to minus on the 7MF and G plus on the RWF here to plus on the 7MF. Now that the components are installed and wired correctly, there are a few parameters to set on each device. Begin by measuring the distance between the reference leg and the working leg taps on the vessel. On this demo boiler, that distance is 20 inches. Then go to the RWF, enter OPR, and then enter to get to SP1 and set that to the desired set point in inches water column. This should be the desired height of water in the vessel above the working leg tap. Next, go to PARA or parameter and set PB1 to 5. Enter for PB1, then DT to 0 and RT to 80. These are the preliminary PID settings. While in the PARA menu, the parameter menu, also set HYS1 to 0 and HYS3 to 100. Then escape to configure. Hit enter to go to INP. Then enter again to INP1. Set sensor 1 here. Set sensor 1 here to 16, then set SCL to match the distance between the taps of the working and reference leg. In this case, we'll set it for 20 inches as we measured previously. Then set SCH to 0. Now go back to config, enter to go to controller or CNTR and set C type, hit enter here rather, set C type to 2. Finally, back up to config, then output and set enter there 
and set sine to 1, as shown. Next, go to the 7MF DP transducer and set mode 5 to 0. The buttons are clearly on the top with a mode, an arrow up, and an arrow down. Mode 5 is 0. Then set mode 6 to the negative value of parameter SCL1 previously entered in the RWF. In this case, that will be negative 20 inches. Next, the, deep, the 7MF DP transducer must be zeroed. Begin by closing both isolation valves on the three valve manifold and opening the bypass valve. Go to mode 7 on the 7MF and hold both the up and down arrows to zero the transducer. Once completed, close the bypass valve and reopen each isolation valve. Finally, we need to confirm a couple settings on the SK actuator. Remove the white plastic cover and locate the four dip switches near the bottom of the circuit board. Starting from the left, switches 1, 2, and 4 should be down, and switch 3 should be up, as shown. This sets the actuator to work off the 4 to 20 milliamp modulating signal. The system should now be functioning properly. If you need additional help, check the link in the description below for written instructions based on what was just covered. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy Precise Level Control, brought to you by SCC.